Welcome to the Tread Like Trilogy reading vlog. Before you watch this, please watch the other vlog where I read uh, the first chapters for a bunch of self-published fantasies. And this is the second vlog, the follow-up vlog to that one. And I've decided to go with the Tread Like series by Zach Argel first. And based on what I know about this series, it seems to be about it's about Chris who is a high general in this world and he's currently investigating a mystery that's happening in his um, country where people are stealing the bloods of um, his kind which is Tread Weavers so that they can drink that blood and become Tread Weavers themselves in a way that if they drink that blood um, they have the powers of Tread Weavers for a short while and he's on an investigation to find out uh, what has happened and why is this happening and to prevent his people, um, the Tread Weavers, from... No, to prevent other Tread Weavers like him from being kidnapped and to be used like that. So that's essentially the premise. And I picked this because I enjoyed the first chapter of um, The Voice of, uh, Voice of War compared to everything else that I read. So I'm reading this first and I'm very excited with where this is going. Um, I'll catch you guys in an update. I meant to update you way earlier for The Voice of War. But guess what? I flew through it and I'm currently on the 200 page mark out of 360 pages. It's so good. Like, w w nobody warned me. Like, I, I, I think it's a book where... A lot of booktube has been talking about it and yet not enough of booktube is talking about it and yet also not enough of the normal humans beyond booktube are talking about this. I went to Goodreads to check out like how many people really read this. I understand not everyone uses Goodreads but I went there and there's only like a thousand plus ratings. Shocking because I thought with the amount of people who love Ms. Bond, they would want to pick Voice of War up because very similar. Okay, how I'm pitching this book to be is that it's a Miss Bond mix Venom, you know? Miss Bond x Venom. Okay, the story, the writing is not anything like Miss Bond. It's different. It's different. It seems to be a little bit more medieval because it seems like these people are on the edge of not using technology or haven't even discovered a watch because in this book, our character Chris receives a watch from his like mentor figure, his boss. And it's like, oh, you don't ever have to go to the sundial in the center of the um, plaza. I don't know what time it is. I was like, what world are we living in? So how it's similar to Miss Bond is that they have the same magic system. So Miss Bond, which is a series written by Brandon Sanderson, um, has characters who can ingest metals and with different kinds of metals they had different kinds of powers and so a normal like person who can I, I forgot the term exactly exactly but um a normal person who can use these metals for magical powers would only be able to ingest one kind of metal and then they'll be able to push and pull themselves it's hard to explain i guess because Example, if another metal is on the other side of the world, not the world, okay, maybe there's a metal that's like 50 yards away, and then you'll be able to burn a certain type of metal and you can pull yourself there, or you can throw a coin on the ground and you just a different kind of metal and push yourself away from that piece of metal. Something along those lines. That's how Brandon's, um, Brandon Sanderson's world works. But for the voice of war, uh, voice of war, um, the world is a push and pull system as well, but different because they don't use metals. They ingest. They don't ingest metals. They really are born with the ability to do a push and pull action. Uh, but there are only two types of people who can tread. Is tread weavers. They can see tread light, uh, and they are able to push and pull. So sapphires can push, emeralds can pull. And then when they use this tread light ability, they will essentially glow from within, like the color that they are able to tread weave. Example, if you're emerald, you grow em glow emerald, but you're not able to use this power for too long. And in Sanderson's world, 
it's about burning the metals until there's no more metals left behind. And essentially from there, you, you are burnt out. But for this, it's just an innate ability. And the more you use it, the more you're reliant on it. So therefore, they don't encourage you to use it for too much. And so that's how the magic system is pretty much similar. And, um, but Sanderson has a lot more than just push and pull with his metals. So yeah. And the thing about this thread like weaving is that it seems like there's not just a push and pull, that there seems to be more than just emeralds or sapphires. So in this world, you're either an emerald, a sapphire thread weaver, or you're someone who doesn't have those abilities and you're achromatic and you will be born with brown eyes. But the story seems to be progressing in a way that we, we find out that there's more to just sapphire and emerald thread weavers. There seems to be a different color scheme to this thread weaving and a lot more that the people in this world don't understand about thread weaving. And that is just amazing. Like I, I just love the fact that the way that Zack Argel <clears throat> has structured his world in a way that just excites me because it's very plot driven for sure. It's not character driven. We are we are introduced to quite a few characters but we don't we don't know the biggest backs we are not very emotionally connected to them. Even if we are sort of in their heads, we understand what they are feeling, we understand their backstories, we understand what is important to them, what is you know scary to them and everything. I just don't feel very extremely connected to them. Because we don't know their innermost, like deepest, darkest thoughts and their pains and their struggles in a very easy to connect with way. Yeah. And we're already introduced to a multitude of characters from different perspectives, um, which which is for a short, short book, which is about 360 pages, there's not much to go on, right? But it's extremely plot driven. We are like racing through this plot like super fast. And it's very, very exciting. It's very difficult to put down, which is why I'm already at the 200 page mark over the week. And I'm very busy in terms of like school and work. And it's very unlike me to read this fast. I've been dedicating all my break times to read this and I zoom past it during break, which I'm appreciative of. I really like good story like that. Get me through like work, cabal. Yeah. And the other part where I say it's similar to Venom is the fact that our main character, Chris, it's some sort of a creature inside of him? Uh, not too sure because he doesn't say that it's a creature, but it seems to be an entity, a being. Whether it's him, a, an alternate him, or an actual being, uh, he calls it the apogee. And the apogee is always like, mm, Chris, let me out. Let me out. I can fight for you. You're too weak. Which is very similar to Venom. Um, if you watched Venom. And it's quite funny. So, the ap- uh, Chris is a high general in this world and it seems that he um it seems that he has um started okay it seems that he has been in a war before and being in that war has changed him as a person and also guarded him a lot of respect in his society and he's the high general but he's known to be called the apogee when he was in war because he was a f- he was essentially, his fighting style was extremely feral. He killed a bunch of people and really, really bl- brutally. But it turns out it seems to be this creature inside of him that is the apogee that makes him fight people um, regardless of whether they are friend or foe. And that, that is an aspect of the story that is not too deeply addressed right now, but you just know that there's something in him that what you know will eventually come out. You know. Yeah. And with where the story is progressing right now, we're just having a bunch of questions that are popping out and we are just awaiting for it to be addressed. Um, and I'm really, really curious as to what is wrong with this world and what is wrong with these powers. And I want to know. And I'm very excited and I'm very, 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 very curious. And I want to go on with the book and that's why I'm like dying to read it. So yeah, that is the update. I'm so sorry that I updated so far in Noni. But I mean... Yeah, I, I, I actually don't have much to say without spoiling you. So that's pretty much it. Catch you guys when I finish it, actually. Okay, guys. So I finished the first book to the Chadlight series by Zerk Argel, Voice of War. I... T- Clearly struggling for words, clearly struggling for words, but I do have a lot of 
um, things I wanted to say about this. So let me just let me just grab my notes. Um, all right, and let's start about talking about this. So okay, already three point five stars for this. Um, three point five stars to four stars. I really enjoyed my experience reading this. Uh, it turned out to be not quite what I thought about the series, but it is as the first chapter is. It's really explosive, it's really action-packed, and we're moving through the story like really, really quickly, very fast-paced. And I think that's the really good part of the book. The fact that the plot just keeps ramping up in intensity and you're just rolling forward like really quickly, like downhill, like you know what I mean? That sounds like a fart. Alright. But that's exactly what it is for um, the voice of, uh, voice of War. And there's so much I enjoyed about this. About So eventually, I really, really fell in love with the world and the aspect of it. And I understand why people are comparing this to a Brandon Sanderson's Miss Bond series. Which, really, there's not much that is similar other than the fact that their magic systems are similar. And even then, it's totally different. Like, that's the only thing that is similar to... Brandon Sanderson's Miss Bond series. Other than that, everything else is different. The plot is different, the uh, character dynamics are different, uh, the premise is different as well. And so our main character, Chris, is um, not someone that is very easy to fall in love with. I feel like I realized with all the characters, I was not attached very much to any of them. I don't really um, feel anything strongly for them. And I think that's probably because Zack Arkel didn't really build the characters very much was very focused on the plot and it was clearly a plot driven book and you know I didn't hate that I enjoyed that as a character driven person I felt like there's so much more I can learn about my characters and their fears and whatsoever I think I understand where Chris is coming from as a character and I understand his fears of things in life um, example the fact that he essentially has creature inside him that is causing him to want to kill people similar to Venom similar for, to Venom and so that that is not something that I really feel for for a character somehow I don't know I just couldn't connect to them I'm not too sure why exactly but I couldn't connect to the characters probably because they're older than me probably because they're going through different life phases than me and blah 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 but I didn't really um feel for them but I really felt for the story and I was very excited and I really wanted to know more about the world as it seems to be and so we are introduced to one part of the world and it just changes over time and it keeps changing which can come off a little messy but I think that's just part of how you understand a world like so far with the world building it does seem a little bit all over the place like um why is this like one part of the world just like that and then we have this random other part of the world that's like that in terms of the magic system and you just like it doesn't make any sense like can you have more cohesiveness but I enjoy that I'm okay with that and so there's no issues with um, the magic system or the world building so far for me but there's not much of um, yeah so for Jack Ar Zach Argel right he writes really straightforwardly and he describes things where he needs to describe, but otherwise he doesn't really put any fluff in his writing, which works out for his fast-pacedness. Because, you see, if he's describing everything in the room, everything about everything, then we'll be really bogged down by all the details and we're not moving forward with the story. So that's probably like to his benefit that his prose is written simply and it's like focusing on all the main important parts of the story and the descriptors for you to just understand enough about the world to imagine it but not enough to be bogged down and dragged down with the plotline. In any case, like I said, because of the world building being so confusing right now um, and it's all over the place, I feel like it's sort of intentional because clearly he's slowly revealing uh, parts of the world as plot points, truly. Because what we know about the world at the very start of the book is vastly different from what we know about the world at the end of the book. And truly, I've already started the second one. And yeah, that is the sort of the work the intentional world building that I think Zach Argyle is doing, even though it's messy, it's working out for me, I'm okay with it. I guess it keeps me really interested. That's pretty much for the first book because I I can't say much and I don't want to say much about spoiling. And honestly, because of the characters, I don't really feel anything for them. 
um, which I think can be a deal breaker for a lot of you. But you know, you never know who you cur- you can connect to as a character. For me, it's just I and feel for them. You know, if you are you have like good maternal instincts or you are a mother, maybe you feel a lot for our main character Ari- Ariel. Is that her name? Yeah. But I don't so I don't feel that. In any case, yes. So I'm already on to the second book which is um Stones of Light. And our characters are all split. So it seems that, you know, Zach Ariel is taking up the typical um storytelling methods of second book. First book, all the characters from different areas converge and meet and, you know, go on their adventure and things ensue. But then the second book, characters start to split up. And so, the second one, the characters are all split. And do I like that? Yes, because it's really helping us understand the world much better than the first. So, what I thought about the world now, all dashed. Because... Now it's totally different. And now we are actually seeing beyond the country that they are living in. And we are seeing the other countries. We are seeing beyond geographical location that they are in. And I think we are discovering a lot. And we are discovering about um, Chris's past as well. And how he was this great warrior in the war. And I guess we will know what war this is about. And that's what I'm also curious about. Because what is the war exactly? I do not know. I want to know that. Yeah. That's working out really, really well for me. And I'm reading this series so fast, like I said, because it's so fast-paced. And we're just jumping from plot point to plot point to plot point to plot point. And it's not like we're not having time to really absorb everything and feel for the characters and understand their backstory. But I guess it's not the main focus anyways. So um, I'm going through this very fast and I'm really on the 100 pages mark for the second book and I'll probably update you guys um, closer to the end or after I finish it yeah but I can't say much without spoiling you guys so that is the update and I hope that it's not too messy yeah okay see you guys later I'm currently at 200 page mark for Zones of Light. Um, I wouldn't. I think it's about there. I'm not really sure. I need to check. But everyone, no one's more disappointed than I am. I'm dragging my feet with Zones of Light. Um, I don't know why, and I sort of know why. At this point in the book, uh, at this point in the series, our characters are all separated right now and they're all doing their own business and I don't really want that but at the same time I understand why we're doing that because we need to explore more about the world and truly we're getting a lot of information about the world now. It's a little bit messy because it feels like there's just a lot of different parts coming together and not cohesively and I'm struggling with that because the different perspectives luckily are in third person but I I don't really love most of the perspectives that we're following. <laughs> Which is practically all because there's only three different perspectives, sort of. And so far, the plotting does feel a little convenient right now. Um, with the way things are going, it feels kind of convenient. Uh, and I'm not liking it in that sense. Uh, the writing's alright. It's been how it was in the first book and it continues to be good. It continues to be, uh, it continues to capture my attention that way, and the pl- it's just the plotting and where the story is going that is getting a bit messy, and not cohesive, that I am, um, losing, that I'm losing interest in the second book. But I feel like it's just the second book slog, and so maybe it's gonna build up really well for the third book. Right now, it's just really messy, and we're introduced to a bunch of new things that, um, we didn't know before and it's just a lot of new things it's just a lot of new things uh that is not that doesn't seem to come together that's all and that's why i'm getting less and less invested and in the first place i'm not very very attached to our main characters so you know getting them all separated is kind of getting me really bored like in the first book we are trying to discover one mystery and we're really 
pushing through and discovering about the world that surrounds this one mystery. And now we're, sol- we're solving a bunch of other mysteries about the world and I, it's not coming together. I don't know what else to say. So probably keep you guys updated when I finish the book. Um, and then we'll move on to the third book, which I hope picks up the pace. And I mean, it doesn't need to pick up the pace anymore, but it just picks up uh, in terms of plot and everything comes together. And, you know, we're not, we're not getting confused. It's not that I'm confused. It's just not working out for me. I don't know how else to explain it. But yeah, keep you guys updated then. Hey everyone, so I've read um, Stones of Light and I finished it already and I have some thoughts which I've written here in my journal uh, because I realised I can't seem to remember like any of my thoughts and then I just struggle through trying to articulate my thoughts and so I decided to write it down and let me look for it okay, here it is Stones of Light I don't have any good thoughts so far with this it did its purpose, it was fast paced, and it was exciting to read about, and that's about it because I thought that this was a bit of a mess and all our characters were split up, like I've mentioned in the previous clips. But ultimately I felt like the protagonists were really all over the place and I felt like it was so disjointed in its narrative for that reason because they're like one person is in one place, the other person is another, and the other one is like someone else. And you're just following the story from this multiple perspective. And I understand that it helps to get us to understand the world a lot better. And to build a story that's more multifaceted. And has more depth to it. Because you understand the world a lot more in different areas of this country. Or this world that's set in. But it did feel like really really disjointed. It wasn't done very smoothly. But okay. Okay, never mind. But then, the thing is that when we find out more about the world, the reveals about how the world is being structured, it kind of lacks the finesse. It kind of lacks the finesse of like piecing them all together really nicely. It just ends up looking kind of messy and really disjointed with each other in that sense. Where you just feel like it's just really convenient plotting rather than an actual world-building factor that... Um, that seems natural for the world it feels like uh, that's just a plot device so that you can move the plot forward in a way that's convenient for our characters and the storyline and that's how I felt and yeah and when eventually usually when all the characters come together you get really excited and you're really happy like oh gosh like they're all coming together this is so cool because they have all their different knowledges and they're being joined into one like segment again as one group um it it just like luster for me. I I I I, I don't know. It was just kind of like oh okay, you guys are back together. I I liked you guys together before, but now that you're back together again, I do not feel excitement, and I find it's very strange that I don't. Yeah, and you know like I I don't know if you've watched Stranger Things, but I've watched Stranger Things, and when you know the narrative is always about the characters being split up, and they all have their own information, and you know as the reader, that they do not know this info. And when they finally come together, you're like, oh my gosh, they're going to finally tell every, uh, each one, like each person, um, the things that they know and everybody will have a much clearer picture of everything. But like I said, because the reviews in the world are so disjointed and doesn't feel like they're synonymously together, when they come together, it doesn't feel synonymous either. You know, the information still remains to be disjointed and not connected well. Um... So in that case, knowing more than our characters then, then eventually wait for them to all come together feels like doesn't really serve the purpose of the story as well. Because I think where Zach Argyle shines in his um, plotting is the fact that he does really good um, plot twists and plot reviews in a sense where it may feel a little bit absurd or bizarre, but it works. It works because you get that shock factor and you're like, oh my gosh, I never knew that that's the case. But in book two, he didn't do any like anything shocking and most of it is like knowing more than the characters already. So it's not that exciting when characters find out about this other aspect. You're like, oh yeah, I mean, we knew, I guess. So 
all right, you know, moving on. Yeah, and, and I think that's just, he works best with the, like, he works best with um, keeping the knowledge in that the characters know to the same level as the reader, that the reader knows. Yeah, that's my point. <laughs> and overall, um, I'm trying to connect to our characters a lot, but I really don't like some of them. And I love Laurel the most because I find her storyline to be the most intriguing, to be the most exciting. And I, I can envision a pretty good character growth for her. And I think by the end of Stones of Light, I was um, I was pleased with where she went as a character. Though I think she's a little bit smarter than I anticipated. And that's a good thing. I think she didn't make any like dumb bitch moves, which I really enjoy out of her character. I think more often than not, you always see um, characters, whether it be a guy or a girl or whatsoever, and they make a lot of dumb bitch movements. I, I don't know how else to explain, but essentially, info is being put up into put in front of them, and they just accept it without questioning. And Laurel doesn't do that, and I really enjoy that about her character, and she continues to grow, and her mindset about the world changes a lot because of where she comes from, and... I enjoy her character growth in that sense. I am very, very, very partial to Chris. And I I just barely enjoy his storyline. I don't feel like there's much about him that is worth rooting for. There's not much about him that makes you feel like, yeah, I look forward to your growth. And therefore, I'm kind of like snooze bored. But the character I dislike the most has still to be Alvarex. And he doesn't get introduced in the first book really quickly like he appears later on in the books and i don't want to talk too much about him but i i can't connect with the guy i think he could have been i think he could have easily been a really interesting character but zach argyle gave him a storyline that is just really snooze for me but that's also because okay it included an aspect of novels that i don't really like uh into his plot line and i'm like oh ah uh, no I, why do we have to simplify him into that, just that particular thing? And I just, I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that. And it continues from book one to book two. Because book one also had a little bit of that. And book two was like prominently that. And it didn't make sense for the storyline other than to add some spice to the plot line for Alvarex. Because other than that, there was nothing truly exciting for him. Yeah. And that's all I really have to say for our characters. But... The ending was the kind of ending I was expecting from Zack Algirl, and he did not disappoint. And so that pushed me really to want to read the next book really quickly. Yeah. So I will update you tomorrow on Bounds of Chaos. Uh, when I read more. So far, I'm about a hundred pages in, but I want to be more concise and maybe reach like the halfway mark before I um talk about it more. Okay. Catch you guys tomorrow for the next update. Hey everyone, um, I meant to update you the next day, which I did not. I've already reached the 90 page mark of the book and I have some thoughts to share with you. It's upside down. It's upside down, guys. Actually, lots of thoughts. <laughs> but this is like for the first 50% of it. And um, is it an improvement? From the second book, not really. <sighs> is it more cohesive now? Not really. But at least because it's the third book, in the final book, we're trying to tie up all the threads that are being reviewed in the second one. And so because there are multiple threads to tie, it is getting a little messy following different characters again, even though they are sort of in the same area as each other. <laughs> Some things I realized is that I feel, as the reader, whilst reading the book, is that with the third book, I don't feel like the stakes are high. 
even though technically the stakes are high. If they don't defeat these evil people right now, pretty much they're all going to die. But I don't feel anything with that revelation. I don't feel anything about the fact that, you know, they're all going to die. I just feel like because of the way Zach Argel writes and the way he sets up a story, it feels like, ah, uh, whatever, they're going to survive. It doesn't feel like they won't, they may not. It just feels like definitely they will survive. Maybe some people will die, maybe may- our main characters won't die at all. I definitely don't feel like our main characters di- would die at all. And second of all, I don't feel very much for our main characters still until the third book. I'm still not connected to them. I still don't like Alvarex. I don't like a lot of people in this book. I only like Laurel. And I think it's just because I, I prefer Laurel's storyline and I just, yeah. So, talking about the char- talking about character deaths, uh, I realised he's been using a lot of the characters in his story to die for the purpose of our main characters. So the side characters are dying to serve a purpose and a main like, driving force for our main characters, which I just find is kind of cheap. But, I mean, I, I guess... I guess some people wouldn't find that cheap. Maybe they would really connect with our secondary characters a lot. But I don't feel connected to them. Therefore, I don't feel anything. And I just feel like it's meant to drive our characters to like achieve their goals more. If you get what I mean. Yeah. And... Oh, another thing is that sometimes I feel like I'm being spoon-fed by uh, Zack Ariel about the ideas of a character. So... You know, instead of allowing me to really try and figure out what a character is feeling, what a character is trying to... What is a character's ideal? I feel like I'm being spoon-fed their feelings, like their emotions aren't just straightforwardly... Mm. The emotions are not just like being described. He describes the emotion and then explains the emotion to you. So it's as if, you know, he doesn't want you to miss out on... A character's emotion, like example, if a character is crying, he would say, they are crying tears of sadness. It's like, yeah, I know they're crying. Um, Okay. In the context, you would know that they're crying tears of sadness. He didn't need to add the word sadness to indicate that his character is sad because based on the context, you know that they're sad. So I guess it's a little bit of an element of overriding, per se. Yeah, and... um, but with this particular book, even though we're technically moving really quickly with everything because we're trying to solve the issue and so save everyone, um, there's some times where we get a little bit of downtime for our characters to really bond. And I, I guess you kind of enjoyed that, even though it does make the pacing of the story a little choppy. But I did enjoy the time to get spent together because this is the reason why um, I don't find our... Um, characters' relationships to be very realistic or very believable. I don't understand why they are so attracted and so bonded with each other when in reality, is it just their circumstance that's bonding them and therefore the reader doesn't feel it because it's just a circumstance? Or are they really like people who can get along with each other despite this current circumstance that they're in? And I just feel like they're not really truly connected with each other and... Therefore, when we have some downtime where they can connect and they can talk to each other, you can see how the relationship is building over time because most of the time, they're not really building their relationship. And therefore, I find it hard to root for them together. And when they say like, oh, I love you, in, in, in a platonic or non-platonic way, it just doesn't hit. It just doesn't. I'm not convinced, my friend. I'm not convinced, for sure. Um, so Chris is one of our main characters. And so... He has a wife named Irio, and Irio throughout the entire three books doesn't really get a spotlight. And I think for what Zack Argel is pushing her to be, which is this really strong, independent, powerful, tread like weaver person, I am not convinced by her and not convinced by her strength. It's just like it's all tell and no show with her. And so with this particular one, she gets a little bit more. Of the spotlight, which I appreciate because I think she has potential. It's just that Zach Argel has too many main characters and then he's focusing a lot on the others and just ignoring her as the baby mother. You know what I mean? Yeah, and so I didn't like that. I'm glad that she's getting more here. So I'm not far away from the end of the final book and I'll probably wrap up my thoughts about the entire series by the end. 
But truthfully, I'm letting you know that it's not very optimistic. Catch you guys later. It's time to close out the vlog, everyone. Because I'm done with the Treadlight series. And let's talk about what was good and what was bad. So I want to start off with the good stuff because I think it merits talking about the good stuff. Um, first of all, I think this series would be really, really beneficial for people who like books that are really fast-paced and has a, it's really plot-driven where we are pushing forward with the plot really quickly and you can't seem to stop because of that reason. And another thing is that I think Zach Argel built a really interesting world. Initially, in the first book, it definitely felt very fresh and very cohesive as a world. However, as we moved on to the second and third book, it started to get a little bit messy in the world building, and he, he definitely opened too many treads and not closed most of them. So really, um, no idea why with that. One of the one of the threads that he opened up in the initial first book, uh, was the fact that people in the Alkian society can only have two children with um, uh, two children that are either achromatic without thread light or with thread light, and by the time if they have a third child, they must have thread light and. If they don't, they will be sacrificed to the sort of a church of Archaea where they become a monk that is blind. And I think that's a thread that he opened that was interesting, but there was no reason behind why this society had this thing. And I think that it does warrant some explanation and it would benefit to have some explanation to it. And that's just one thing without spoiling you at all. The other things is that Probably the characters and the character development and the character relationship developments are kind of lacking. Um, I think he tried very hard to build them to be characters with some depth, with a lot of um, things that you could relate to or at least feel for. But honestly, a main group of characters are kind of dislikable to me. I couldn't find a reason to like them very much. I just felt like they were all essentially somewhat of a carbon copy of each other, which was that they wanted to be heroes, that they felt the need to be the chosen one to save everybody, except for Laurel, which is why I really enjoyed Laurel as a character. Probably not enough to feel too much about her, but enough to feel a little bit more than the others that are present in the story. And she's just a little bit different. She's a, she got a little bit of an anti-hero energy. She doesn't feel like she's a chosen one for sure. She just feels like she needs to do what she needs to do. She's not dumb. She's one of the only main... Part of the main three main characters that I'm talking about here. She is the only girl in there. And I think she displays less of a childish nature uh, than the other two. Even though she's technically the youngest. And I think she is cooler than all of them and she has a friend that is a chroma wolf i think that's cool i wish i could have a chroma wolf that is my friend and i mean that's just very basic things about laurel that are very cool but i don't want to spoil too much i don't want to spoil at all in fact about this story so that you can just watch this video and get a vague idea of what is good and what is bad so other than that i felt like Talking about the characters, Zeha Argel has a lot of secondary characters which he will reveal through the stories and I'm not gonna lie, a lot of them just got offed. They, 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 they die really easily and I just feel like they're there to move the plot forward. I don't really like that because I think that you should give more purpose to your secondary characters other than to be the pawn for like death scenes. So that you could impact your main characters in order for them to want to do more. And I just, I don't care about that. Yeah. I guess you guys are going to be sick of me saying this. But I'm still going to say it one more time. I really dislike Alvarex. I think he's such a, he's so irritating. That for the kind of person that he's trying to portray himself to be. He's really none of those things. And he's so irritating and just 
I don't think that was Zach Argyle's intention with Alvarez. And I don't think that is intentional by Zach Argyle to make him a hated character. In fact, I don't think that's the point of his story. So I guess his character is not fully fleshed out and he probably could have been a little more. And I think we could have gone through a little bit more for Alvarez. The only time that I really enjoyed Alvarez's character was actually the last 90% of the book where he was doing something that was really like mm, questionable but you know he needed to do it and he seems to be the only way out for everything and I was just like okay wow well, Alvarez this is the first time you made such a hard decision and you know what that's so damn dark and I love it but he kind of just makes it without like any repercussions he like passed that decision that he made that is kind of dark semi-evil some people might find it i think it's a necessary evil maybe but after making that really difficult decision he doesn't take like one or two seconds to even like he doesn't even take like five or ten minutes to contemplate he's just like yeah let's just do it and he's the one who recommends it i understand but he's like no doubt no doubt i'm just gonna i'm just gonna do this decision because it benefits everyone and so therefore you guys um y'all need to y'all need to step up and I was just like, no, Alvarex, I think you're not being very compassionate here. And for someone who's trying to be really compassionate about people and really trusting of people, you're kind of weird to, to even insinuate that. And um, therefore, I just I just can't with his character. I, he just became really dislikable from the start to the end. And nothing, nothing is redeeming for him. And other than that, I feel like a lot of secondary characters that Zack Argel has created is meant to have more weight to the story. Really, they do. But they get thrown to the side. So there's a bunch of secondary characters that we meet in the first book that don't carry on to the second or third book and then they randomly appear at the end of the third book and you're like, oh yeah, I forgot about you. And they could be significant because they are significant to our main character, Chris, which is another main character. And they are significant and have a supposedly important relationship to Chris. And they're a part of none of this trauma-inducing events. I just don't understand how that's possible because if my friend is in danger, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I'm going to go there and help him out. You know, like for the sake of my family, for the sake of his family, and for the sake of everyone. So I'm kind of confused why his original like sort of motley crew kind of thing is not with him to solve the problems. And this kind of... That's kind of weird, I think, for a crew that is so tightly knit with Chris. Sort of, that's how Zach Argel built it. So I felt like he could have just done better without so many characters. If not, what I think would have been better was actually, I would have preferred if this story was longer. Why? Because these books are like about 300 pages long each. Which, I mean, you can do a word count, but there's not many words too. And... I just, he could have benefited being longer. Not because of anything, but he could have built his world a lot better. He could have tied up a lot of threads. He could have not, he could have either not done so many things or done, and flushed out more things that he already built instead of like adding more things into the soup. It's like a big bowl of chicken soup, adding thousand and one ingredients, but not adding the salt. And so it's just like a little bland, but not too bland. You know, you still have the ingredients, like the carrots and onions and all the aromatics that are making it delicious, but the salt is needed to enhance everything. And so he was lacking the salt in his story. The fundamentals are pretty dope. The fundamentals are pretty solid in its own way. But the seamen, the seamen holding the bricks are kind of not enough. And therefore, it's a little bit crumbly um, as a structure for me. And that's how I describe it. So ultimately, I do think that a beginner to fantasy might actually enjoy this because they're not looking out for all these details and not they're not gonna be scrutinizing everything. They're just gonna go in and enjoy the world and actually just take it all in as someone who's fresh to the genre. But someone who's more seasoned might find that they're lacking because maybe we're exposed to more fantasy worlds. We know what to expect from other fantasy worlds, and therefore when we approach this, it might be a little bit lacking a little bit shallow and not fully well realized in its own way 
And honestly, that's why I recommend this for people who actually care more about their plots, who care more about a fast-paced story. Because I'm actually someone who is not like that. I really care about characters and their relationships. I really care about um, a good world. You know, that's why I like J.R. Tolkien, because he over-describes his worlds. I used to hate that, but now I really love it. But because it builds a very rich history for me at the back of my mind, so that when I'm reading the plot, I can see everything that's going on. I really like that. And yeah, that's kind of lacking in here. And therefore, I think... And so some people might not enjoy that if they're a reader like me. So ultimately, I do not want to read this series i don't know how to rate it i think it's about a three stars out of five i enjoyed it but it was just all right ultimately um the second and third book were disappointing to me the first book was really good to me because it built up a really good base and then the structure just crumbled after that and so and so therefore to wrap it all up i do recommend it to people who really enjoy a plot-driven, fast-paced book. And ultimately, I realized that this book is just not for me. It is good. It is not theoretically bad, actually. It is theoretically a not bad book. And so I can foresee a lot of people enjoying this, and, and there are quite a bit of people who really love this series. And so I still employ you to check it out for yourself and to see whether this is the kind of book that you appreciate. Maybe you enjoy the magic system a lot more than I do, Maybe you enjoy the characters a lot more than I do. Maybe these are the kind of characters that you actually um, can relate to more than I would. So I hope this reading vlog is sufficient to help you decide on whether you want to pick this up. But thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this vlog. If you're going to pick up the Treadlight series or if you love the Treadlight series or hated it, tell me in the comments down below. Tell me. What is it that you love so much about it? What is it you hated so much about it? Or if you're actually really interested in picking this up. So, so don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!